previously on the KP Watershed channel. So I'm walking around, I'm getting approached constantly by men and women. They're older, they look kind of sketchy, they're beggars, they're pimps, they're hookers. Then one girl comes up to me and she's different from all the rest. So she says something like, just let me walk next to you. If I walk next to you, then no one else will bother you because you'll be with a girl. So we walk back, we walk down the road, we walk back up the road and we're just talking. So she goes, want to just get a drink with me? You know, how about a beer? I'll, I'll, I'll get a beer, you get a beer, or you can get your coffee. So she leads me to this bar. It's not TJ right. Fridays, right? Okay. Yeah. All the seats are taken at the bar and in the booths. So the hostess walks us up a flight of stairs. We walk down this hallway and now I'm like, all right, like, thanks, but no thanks. Like, I, I see where this is going. Listen, I don't want a private room. So the girl and the hostess are like, oh, what, why? Like, just go into this karaoke room, have a, have a quick drink, do some karaoke, and then head back downstairs. So we order two more beers, one for each of us now. Waiter comes back into the room, and he comes back in carrying a platter with four more doubles of whiskey. What the fuck? And I'm like, no, 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 we're leaving. We didn't order these. And then the door swings open. It's this short, stocky Chinese guy. And now I'm like, oh, okay, this doesn't look good. He writes down whiskey bottle service at 8,800 RMB. So the total bill is more than 1,600 American dollars. Now three large Chinese men walk into the room with us. Oh shit. I only really have a credit card. And he goes, is it Visa? Uh, I, I think, I think, I think it's Visa. Yeah, I think so. So he says, all right, perfect. You wait here. I'll go downstairs and call the guy who has the credit card machine. I pull out my wallet. I take the two Visa cards, my debit card and my personal Visa and kind of hide those behind my license in like a flap that you can't really see. I'm still waiting for my phone to load. It still won't open. And now the door swings open and the manager's back and he gets straight to business. The manager says, okay, give me your credit card. Again, I say again, very calmly, you know, first of all, I think we still need to discuss the specific price and second, by the way, I only have this American Express. Is that okay? And he goes straight to yelling again. You think I stupid? You, you think I stupid? You lie. You say before you have Visa. Wear Visa card. Show me Visa. Show me Visa. No, 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 no Express. So he is sure that I'm lying, which I am. And, <laughs> you know, I told him. But I, I, I think you have a right to lie in this situation because it seems like there's a lot of lying going on. Yeah, I mean, it was really, I, I felt like, you know, I was taking the best paths I could take given, you know, the limited options I had. And so I tell him that I do have a Visa debit card. And I did say that earlier. I admit that, yes, I said that earlier. But I realized that I left it at the hotel. Um, so I don't have the debit card with me, but it is back at the hotel. Right now I only have this Amex credit card. So what works for them? Can I use my cell phone to check my debit balance? Like maybe we can go back to the hotel and I can make an ATM withdrawal there for them. Or we can just try to use this Amex card that I'm pretty sure is not going to work. Um, or maybe we can go to a, you know, an ATM at the street level right. and use the Amex as the, I'm like just, you're buying, you're buying yourself time. Yes. I'm really just trying to stall. Um, and yeah, hope that there's going to be an opening. So he asks the computer guy in Chinese whether the Amex card will work. Computer guy says, nope, absolutely will not work. So manager says, okay, check balance on your phone. Check, check your debit balance. So this is still taking me a while because I'm still fiddling around trying to get a web browser to work, to download with this shaky Wi-Fi signal that keeps disconnecting. And the manager is watching me over my shoulder the whole time. So I ask him, can, can I have a little bit of sp space? This is, you know, it's a little intimidating. And can we just go downstairs? Like I would feel so much more comfortable if we could, if I could just pay downstairs in a place where I don't feel like I'm in danger and being held prisoner. He, no, no, my club, my rules. We go downstairs, how I know you don't run away. We go downstairs, you run out door. And then, you know, if you steal from us, then I in trouble with my boss. If you steal from us, we get no money. No, 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 we stay here. It's been almost an hour now, and we've been debating every single point about the room and the bill and the best payment methods, and just over and over, he keeps telling me that, you know, they have this whiskey bottle service rule or this bottle service rule, and it's, you know, it's his club, his rules, 
you know, how dare I come into his establishment and, you know, you typical, typical American try to come in and make your own rules. Do you think rules don't apply to you, you American? Spoiled, spoiled American. And, and this whole time, like, you're on a weird sleep schedule and now you've got some booze in your system. So you yeah. must be feeling like all, all sorts of fucked up. Yeah, yeah, it's, that's exactly it. And, and he made this example or analogy a few times. He goes, if you were in grocery supermarket, could you, can you take sip of milk and then return milk to the shelf? It keeps using that example. You know, can you do, do you think you could do this in supermarkets? And I say back to him again, calmly, you know, first of all, supermarkets show the prices of their items. They don't hide it and mislead you and then charge you a higher price at the last second. And the, again, the hostess told us that the room was free and Ling, you know, is still backing me up on this. And, and second, a respectable supermarket would not hold somebody prisoner making these kind of threats and you know he's been talking about his mafia connections and his boss is you know is in with the police and with the mafia like just i don't want to mess with them you know would a, a normal supermarket go to those tactics he says if someone steal yes supermarket can supermarket do do that you do not know china you don't you don't know china you don't know my club it's my club my rules so i'm not trying to get him more riled up i don't want to argue his points um, i'm intentionally trying to just stall and find a, a possible out from this room and from the situation and i just keep saying things like listen if you'll just negotiate downstairs i'll pay you whatever i can pay you we'll figure out a price ling says that she might chip in a little money too and ling is like yep this is true like i'll, I'll pay some too and you know i'm thinking to myself now all right worst case scenario here they beat me up here in this room and take all my stuff, take my wallet with all the credit cards and the debit card and empty out my debit account. Or, or worst, worst, worst case, right? They, they, I wind up dead, right? Or in a hospital and they've sold all my organs. Like this, these are the thoughts that are now going through my mind as I'm stuck here. <laughs> best case scenario, you know, you gotta go worst case, best case. Best case scenario is I find a way to talk myself downstairs and then I'm able to make a run for it. Or I pay for the Pepsi and the beers. That is your plan. So he was right. Your plan when you're downstairs is to run for the door. Totally. Or, or you know, unless there's maybe a police officer down there, like that was a possibility too. But yeah, if I had to run, at least downstairs, I could I could run for the door, which I can't do here with, with you know, the bodyguards blocking the door. Or, yeah, I mean... You know, and, there, and there's just more witnesses downstairs. Yes. So, you know, if you make a big enough scene, who knows, the police might get There's involved. witnesses. It maybe would be easier to get into the Wi-Fi and be able to call the police for help. Um, you know, or maybe I can just do something, smash a bottle or something to, you know, bring attention to the situation and just get, yeah, get more people involved and, you know, not be so alone and surrounded. That went through your mind? I'll go, I'll go downstairs and smash a bottle? I'm just running through every possible scenario in my head just trying to think well could this work could this work should i try this you know and i'm also thinking i still have the camera in my pocket you know i'm also wondering should i try to turn on the audio to record audio of what's happening just in case something violent happens so that i have evidence but can't do it like i cannot risk them knowing that i have a camera in my pocket so that's out of the question manager is still screaming he's clearly trying to intimidate me into just pulling out my visa card which he still believes i have a visa card hidden somewhere and he's actually kind of embarrassing himself now like he's been we've been there for you know right like around an hour he's still red in the face his veins are popping out he's spitting as he talks and yells every time i try to take out my cell phone he's trying to grab it away from me but he's not getting it out of my hand and it's you know it's after 1 a.m now so the credit card guy the laptop guy says something in chinese he has to leave he can't wait anymore so he leaves and now the manager is really pissed because now there's no credit card machine and he starts yelling at me you know you, you waste all our time time is money i i will charge you now for all our time too so we'll argue some more about that he's yelling at ling in chinese now too and you know as ling and i start to talk about how much we together can pay the manager here's where he says to me now you know you, this disgrace, how is you going to let your girl girlfriend pay? You know, you, you won't accept this bill like a man? Are you, and he goes, you, you a pussy? You, you a pussy? <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah. Sure, you can call me whatever you want, sir. I'm never going to see you again, that, hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. we're on the same wavelength, Mike. That's exactly what I said. I just kind of shrugged my shoulders and calmly said, well, yes, I guess by your definition, yes. I guess I am a pussy. 
And like, you know, he's, <laughs> I cannot believe he, he would dishonor himself like this. Meanwhile, Chinese Shrek is still there, guarding the door, and he's clearly backing up his boss physically, right? He's blocking the door, he's towering over us and glaring at me. Right. But he is starting to seem, Chinese Shrek is starting to seem very annoyed. Like, we've been there a while, and like, he looks like, to me, it looks like, based on his facial expression, it. I think he's thinking he could be doing a much better job of this than the manager was doing. Like, I, I'm imagining that yeah. he's thinking to himself, if he was in charge, he would have either just let me go, or he would be kicking the shit on me right now and taking all my stuff by force. And then... Yeah, just get just get to the point. Like, an hour of trying to bully you hasn't worked, so, like, just either take your wallet or let you go. Yeah, go one way or the other. Stop waffling, yeah? I mean, you know, if you have to break a couple of ribs, break the ribs, take the wallet, and, yeah, scam, done. And he just, he seems to be disappointed in his manager that this is just dragging on, that the manager is trying to sound threatening, but, you know, I've not caved in. I've still resisted everything he's asked for. And we've just been engaging in these stupid debates over minutia, right? Over, you know, who ordered the whiskey and like, should I only have to pay for the watermelon seeds or for all the snacks? Like, these are the little petty debates we're having as we're stuck here. And... Chinese Shrek, he, he's still blocking the door though, but but he just, I started to get the sense, and we, you know, we'd bonded over the shoes earlier. I get the sense that he's maybe rooting for me a little bit. Keep arguing with the manager. What about what about the other two guys? Are there are there are the other two thugs one, still there? One of them is outside, guarding the door from the other side. The other one who's inside does not seem to be on my side. He seems to be just he, kind of really kind of indifferent. They're all everyone's just you know upset that we're stuck here and just wants it to be over with. And, you know, the manager's really starting to seem like an ass. And, you know, it seems like everyone in the room, Chinese Shrek and Ling, are looking at the manager like he's just really in over his head and he's being an asshole. And, you know, I'm apologizing to him. I said, you know, I'm sorry. I should have known the club's rules. You know, it is your establishment. I, I acknowledge you make the rules. And so I offer to pay him a thousand RMB, which is like one hundred and sixty-five dollars, to cover the Pepsi, the beers, the snacks, the two whiskey doubles that we drank at about fifty dollars a piece, which is you know a high price. He says absolutely not. One thousand insulting. Given circumstances, all the time you waste, I will, I will, I will accept seven thousand, which is again still over eleven hundred U.S. dollars. So. Again, this is good. We're we're going back and forth on price. We're moving closer together. Is this a nice place? Is it no, like a high end no. place that anyone would? Yeah, no, very okay, low end. So, yeah. Very very you know sketchy type place. And it it seems you know now I'm seeing you know the holes in the walls and you know the 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 things that I was willing to look past when I was optimistic when we walked in. I'm seeing just how you know run down of a place this really is. And I remind him again, for whatever we negotiate, I only have this Amex card. I have to go back to the hotel if you, if you want to get the debit card, which he doesn't believe me. So I, I wouldn't really say it was haggling. You know, we were going back and forth on price and whether or not I should be charged for the full whiskey bottle, whether it really even was a new bottle to begin with. And there'll be these loud bursts of arguing and then like a 15 second period of silence where we're just kind of at a stalemate. You know, I've got all these things in my pockets and he's not like a couple times he tried to reach for my pockets but i just kind of slink back into this in the sofa and then it just goes back to the same arguments again and everyone's just so uncomfortable the room is getting really cold now i'm still trying to get figure out the police phone number somehow on my phone and again he leans over and sees me searching for police on my phone and really freaks out this time the most he's freaked out for the entire past hour and change and this is where he now finally starts to hit me. So his first punch knocks off my glasses. So my glasses are on the floor now. And green... Is it like, is it like closed fist, like a fucking punch? No, not really. Like I, I've, I've been in fights before, and no, these were not even close to being the worst punches that I've ever felt. Um, it wasn't... It, it, is it like a slap? Is it like an open? It was more of a slap, kind of thing. Yeah, or? it wasn't. Okay. It was. It was. He, his his fists were very loosely held together. It was, and it was more. Yeah, like slapping me upside my head across the, you know, across the head with with his, you know, sort of clenched fist at first. That's what knocked the glasses off. And once he gets that first hit in, then Chinese Shrek comes over and is holding me down. So now I'm 
Oh Jesus. Yeah. So I'm not saying this felt good, right? Like so now the managers Are you are 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 you freaking out at this point like I what was going through my head was just, you know, they're not going to kill me. They're they're hitting me now and this is going to give me <laughs> a stronger position because like now they're in the wrong, right? Like now like up to this point, even if I had gotten the police there, he might still say, you know, we have this bottle service rule. Like he owes me for the bottle service and like the police might say, right. you do have to pay them. Like you Got a bottle of whiskey. You didn't know you're doing it, but you did it. So, you, like, the police might take his side. Now that I'm getting hit, now I know that if I can just get police here or somebody else here, like, now they are definitely in the wrong. And so I just kind of, you know, try to, you know, <laughs> relax into it, you know, go back and think about, you know, when I used to take boxing classes and how to like lessen the impact of, of getting hit. And he hits me, you know, maybe five or six times, maybe a couple more in like on my left cheek and in the ribs pretty hard. And he's, as he's, how does, how does Ling react when you get, she hit? looks horrified. She's like, she's, does she say, does she say stop or anything? No, she's or? not saying anything, but she's now moved all the way to the very, very far end of the couch. And she's like, she looks like she's miserable. Like she can't believe that this has turned into this situation, um, and she doesn't want to get involved, right? She doesn't. She doesn't get pulled into it either. But she's stuck there too. So, you know, as as the hitting is going on, you know, they're they're cursing in Chinese, and you know, again, the whole thing was over me trying to call the police. So he's saying again, police will not help you. My brother is police. They all, all police in Shanghai mafia. No, no police help you. You, you don't know. And, you know, I, I still, to this point, really have not raised my voice the entire time. And I still didn't. I said to him very slowly, once he stopped, you know, hitting for a moment, listen, I offered to pay you using the Amex. You won't accept the Amex. I had shown him the cash in my wallet at this point. I showed you the 420 RMB you wouldn't take that price. I'm trying to negotiate what's a fair price with you. Now you're hitting me. My glasses are on the floor. I can't even see. I feel like I'm in danger now. You know, you're, you're comparing this to a supermarket. You said I'm not treating you or your boss with respect that you deserve in your establishment. Well, is this treating your customer with respect to, to punch him in the face and take his glasses and refuse, you know, when he asks if he if he'll get a receipt for paying cash? Like, is that treating a customer with respect? You know, and refusing to let his, refusing to let him go downstairs to pay his tab where there are witnesses if he's not going to get a receipt. These are respectable ways to treat a customer. That's why I would really feel more comfortable if we just had some third party here, the police or somebody else, just, you know, so I'm not, so I don't feel like I'm getting taken advantage of. And I don't know what part of that speech clicked, but he goes, I am sick of this. Pay your 420 RMB. Girl will pay hers. Never come back here again. You're not allowed here again. You come back here again. You have big trouble. Big trouble. And he shoves me towards the door. Chinese Shrek opens the door. He grabs my arm again. So it's it's a loose grip. You, you get your glasses? Got the glasses. Yeah. And yeah, he had, he had handed me the glasses as I was talking through that speech. So I had those back. And yeah, so Chinese Shrek is walking me down the stairs. He's my forearm and his you know, hand feels like, you know, I've got like a, you know, empty paper towel roll for an arm or something. And, but he's, he's seems to be not trying to hurt me. So I'm downstairs with, with Chinese Shrek now. The bar is pretty empty now. You know, it's, it's around 2 a.m. And he motions for me to give him the money, the cash I had. I give him actually 400 RMB. So not the full 420. I was still trying to think, okay, I might need to get a tax here. Whatever. He takes the 400 he throws it down onto a booth table, and then he just looks at me and points to the front door, which was open, and it seems like he's signaling for me to leave. And I look at him, I'm like, really, I can go? And he, like, you know, just does another motion, like, just go, 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 go. And so I take that leave, and I just run. I run out the door, I run all the way back to the hotel, and I'm still, I, I even... I'm doing it, reliving the story for the first time. Like, I'm just shaking. Like, you know, I can't believe I got into this situation. I can't believe that I was able to somehow get out of it, you know, without getting held for, you know, a thousand dollars or without getting more hurt. I was nervous about people from work seeing if I had a black eye or something tomorrow and that that hadn't happened. But I was still just more than anything else, just feeling really ashamed with myself for 
walking into the situation, open-eyed, knowing about the scam, thinking it might happen, and, you know, I'm just, you know, doing this self-analysis. Like, was it just me being stubborn or, like, you know, was it bravado? And now it's, like, 2 a.m. and you have to go to work the next morning? Yeah, it's, like, 2.30 a.m. and I have to be at a breakfast meeting at 7 a.m. Oh, my God. So that is when I emailed you and, um, and, yeah, one other person back home. And, um, yeah. That's the story. That's the tea ceremony scam. And, you know, I paid about 65 US dollars, which, again, in a Times Square location for three beers, two whiskey shots, a Pepsi, and watermelon seeds, and all the karaoke plays. 60 and the karaoke and you got a hell of a story out of this. pretty decent bargain <laughs> and um you know for the rest of the china trip for the next two weeks i didn't fall for it a second time fool me once you know blah 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 all that um although i did get approached at least a hundred more times in shanghai over the next two weeks and you know it was all it was those five categories it was the pimps the hookers the beggars the get you whatever you need guy and ling was this fifth category you know cute girls who spoke very good English and just wanted to walk and talk, just wanted to be friends. There were a few more Lings over the next two weeks. You only you in Shanghai? Uh, no, I, but there's other people I know at the hotel. Ah, oh, some people? Yeah. Uh, and now I knew exactly what it was. Now I would say no and not even walk with them. It's, a, it's just another type of scam. It's crazy because, like, like uh, the two of us having grown up in the Northeast United States, like we're kind of programmed to not trust people, you know, right. like you don't make eye contact. You don't like, we don't engage in that much small talk. And like one of the things that for me, like having lived in the South, like the last four years is that like the culture is totally different where people say hello to total strangers and they try to engage you in conversation. I recently got a flat tire in a kind of a rural part of the state and a guy came up on a moped and offered to change my flat tire. And the Northeasterner in me was like, this guy's going to kill me and leave me here. And he just genuinely wanted to help. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's the, yeah, those things are very regional. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, and it's just interesting, but it's like, you know, I like I hear stories like that, and I know it's a very extreme example, but I'm like, that's why I still instinctively like do not really open myself up to strangers. Yeah, you know, that's. I mean, if there's one thing that needs to be reinforced, the lesson here, the whole reason for telling this story, you know, talking to a stranger might be okay if you're in a safe public place, but it was just the stupid, the stupidest thing that I did was allowing Ling, allowing a stranger to lead me to a place that I didn't know was safe, allowing her to lead me somewhere and just going with it. And, and so she, so she stayed in that room when you got tossed from, yeah, the room. she was still up there. And that's, I'll never know to what extent she was involved or not involved. I, my theory. And like, I hope that she, I hope they just let her go right after they let me go. Like I, I have no way of knowing, like maybe I, I I don't know what happened and I still, you know, I feel bad about that too. It wasn't it wasn't a fun night for her either, but I think that Well, Keith, Keith, I got a surprise for yeah. you. All the way from Shanghai on the phone, we have <laughs> Ling. Ling. Ladies and gentlemen. She's okay. Ling. No, no, we don't have Ling. But hey, if you're out there and you know Ling, uh we would love to get her side <laughs> of this. <laughs> she yeah, who fucking knows? Like, I think, you know, as I saw other Lings over the next two weeks, I think the way it works is that just like, you know, if you live in downtown Shanghai and you're a local and you're just used to seeing tourists and foreigners all over the place, like, you know, just like, you know, someone in America might know the local, you know, drug dealer or something, you know, they, they've got a number in their phone for the guy to call when there's a foreigner to be had. And there's just maybe some sort of like, agreement maybe an unspoken agreement that if you send a rich tourist to this guy he'll throw a hundred bucks your way he'll throw 300 bucks your way and like it's just you know again she was had she had she like asked questions at all uh like trying to gauge your wealth 
A little bit, probably. I mean, we were both talking about our families and our jobs, you know, and that was part of it too, right? Like she said she was a painting teacher, so she was on summer vacation, so it would make sense that while she's not working, she's trying to make a few extra bucks by, you know, getting some kickbacks from, from this little whole scam thing. And, you know, there was the whole massage parlor where she had initially tried to lead me. But yeah, I mean, that's the lesson, right? Don't ever follow a stranger anywhere. I also learned a tip for Shanghai later that week. I wish I knew it that first night. Somebody told me, don't say no to all those five types of people who will approach you because it's just the languages are so different grammatically that no is has a kind of different meaning in Chinese from English. It can be perceived as being like more of a no, I'm not really sure, or like I don't understand. So a better response rather than no is I no want, I don't want this. And that's a more effective way to say, I'm not buying what you're selling. Leave me alone. I'm not interested. And that was true. Ah. Saying I no want worked a lot better than saying no to get people to stop bothering me. Yeah, man, I'm, Mike, I'm, I'm sorry to have rambled with this story for so long. It went a lot longer than I thought it would. But uh, I've been captivated by the whole thing. I think this is... Uh... I think this is uh, a very important two states episode because uh, you know as you're trying to do in in these last few minutes it can also be a public service yep, announcement. Yeah, yeah, and podcast is probably yeah the right format for it. I I can only imagine how if I'll be even be able to slice this up into a YouTube video format. But yeah, man, thanks for talking through it with me. It um yeah. anytime, and that's the whole point of two states is. Uh, to uh to talk about uh these different experiences so um keith any other any other final words before we sign off i think that was the perfect way to wrap it up thanks mike all right uh so for the two states podcast and for the kp watershed channel uh i'm mike that's kp we'll talk to you next time don't follow strangers to tell people at work you know because it's an interesting story and like what else do we have to talk about for doing all these trips together but they would have just you know in a in a work environment like it was i shouldn't have been out walking around in the middle of the night to begin with and then i mean there's just some things that i did that i wouldn't have been able to explain in a work context it'll be hard enough to explain it in a, in a podcast context So since then, I decided that I do want to tell the story. It'd be hard to skip over this story and still give a complete picture of the whole China trip. And also, like, you know, it's a it really is a big problem. So, you know, if I post this video and one person watches it and doesn't have the same thing happen to them, that makes it totally worth it.